Hello, hello, and welcome to Non Sequitur News for August 13th, 2024. It's Season 3, Episode 226. I am Mayor Watt, and the voice you hear, the other voice you hear, is the sentient AI from the future, and that is the visualizer that represents the computational power needed to synthesize that voice. Good evening, hometown citizens. Welcome to Non Sequitur News. I think I might need some more computational power today. <laughs> no, that's you're fine. <laughs> Let's get into today's show. We are going to be talking about Budget Airlines, Oceans of Mars, which is the name of my new grunge band, Chuck E. Cheese Scriptions, Oops Nukes, Meds and Summer Mail, Paramount Lays Off More, and that's not a person, that's a bunch of people. Cali fish market goes viral and you never want that, but it's pretty lucrative. Fire tower, Airbnb, Toyota recall due to sticker and a massive data leak that includes everyone. Yeah. Everyone? Everyone. And all of this is powered by hometown.com. Go over and become a citizen and then Follow us here on Twitch and over on YouTube and like and subscribe and be sure to like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment and tell a friend that like and that subscribe helps out the show immensely. Not just non sequitur news, but all of them. We have seven total podcasts included in this. Uh, so you have to go download that too and leave a review and again, tell a friend and Put bumper stickers on cars that aren't even your... No, don't do that. Anyway, everything's owned by... Or everything's put together by... Well, me, Mayor Watt, but hometown.com. See you on the other side of... And I'm starting to think that that didn't actually go through for us. We didn't get to monitor that, but anyway. do do, do. Production value, folks. Oh, somebody left a comment. All right. All right. Oh, I mean, like, left a comment on one of our shows. Hmm. Okay. Oh, sorry. Focus. I know. I know. I, yeah, I'm sorry. The sentient AI keeps me um, on target, I suppose, I guess. No, I right. don't. <laughs> Focused a I little try bit. I to. <laughs> I kind of break the non sequitur. Well, I live up to non sequitur. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, oh, man. I keep peaking everything in the audio lately that happened earlier today in a meeting all right well anyway let's find out what this uh, budget airlines comment is about there's a we aggregate a bunch of news into six main categories and 50 channels they're in and inside those channels i've uh, pulled six weekly shows out um, and I've done a, a weekly, or uh, sorry, a daily show called Non Sequitur News. It used to be called Hometown Daily News Show. And so we've done over a thousand episodes um, across the properties. I've been doing this for two and a half years, actually two years and eight months and 13 days now, right? Seven months and 13 days. Um, it is and counting. The sentient AI uh, joined during that time frame after i went to a wendy's at two o'clock in the morning because i wanted bo spicy booms buffalo wings and they stopped selling those a long time ago apparently and I... but what i found was a sentient ai from the future on a weird looking usb drive and the weirdness just stayed anyway so budget <laughs> airlines like spirit and southwest which i didn't I've never really considered Southwest budget airlines, but Spirit has really made me flinch. They yeah, say that I think those are in two different groups, but I, I think would... like Southwest is like upscale budget. Oh, okay. All right. So like, well, what would be if these were classes of financial, you know, uh, life status, right? Like there's lower class, middle class, upper class, right? Where would spirit be? No, let's not do that. I think that's going to be. Yeah, I don't think that's going to end well. <laughs> so the title of this is budget airlines like spirit and Southwest are getting more desperate. You're going to hate it. 
Then the snippet that is aggregated says low cost airlines like Spirit, Southwest, Frontier and JetBlue are struggling to make money. In excess of cheap economy seats coupled with higher costs have hurt their profitability. Low cost carriers are scrambling to change strategy and create new products to find profits. All of America's low cost airlines have reported their second quarter 2024 earnings and the numbers don't look good. Well, it might be because everything is too damn expensive and even budget is too damn expensive. Absolutely. I mean, the fares on at least one of these airlines have easily doubled since a couple of years ago to the Benjamin, same routes. Yeah. Benjamin Jank over at businessinsider.com put this article together and they have a picture of Southwest and they, I love their paint job on there. But um, what I said is basically their takeaway but the rest of this, from April through June, Spirit Airlines lost $193 million. But how much of that is going to like CEO and other investors? Every time I end up talking about this, mergers and acquisitions have led to this. So True, but I don't know if all of these airlines have been through mergers. Some of them definitely have. Frontier made Some of them attempted million. mergers. Some have attempted mergers. I thought JetBlue and Spirit maybe were trying to merge and that got axed. Well, yeah, you know, we'll have to look at it because I don't remember exactly how everything is shaken out. But it says here from April through June, Spirit Airlines lost $193 million. So how did Frontier make $31 million and JetBlue make $25 million? during the same period, but Spirit Airlines lost $193 million. I might know the answer to that, but let me think for a second here. And both of the ones that made money saw their profits crater. Southwest had the best second quarter of the group reporting a profit of $367 million. So think about this swing. This is the best second quarter of the group. And the difference between Frontier and JetBlue is 10 times, more than 10 times. So one theory is because Spirit had a couple of incidents, which probably caused. Yeah, well, um, like crap. Panic or whatever. You know. Oh, and, you, and so they sold or something like that. Um, maybe or I'm just what? speculating. People didn't, people don't want to take Spirit Airlines if it's reminiscent of a bygone age of everybody traveling as steerage and you can you can have a glass of water but it might take taste like jet fuel well and airlines like spirit not spirit alone advertise these very very low fares right but then it's like do you want a seat i'm that's not exactly like, it out on but the then it's to... like that'll be 30 bucks right or, or yeah. whatever like it's multiple upcharges i mean they're options but there are things that most people might want when they're flying i guess it could be worse could be starliner <laughs> anyway southwest had its best second <laughs> Do you want a return of, trip <laughs> yeah you can you'll get you'll get there but somewhere along the way you'll be stuck we might get you there right that was <laughs> delta yeah. there. <laughs> i thought that was we'll get you there but we'll it didn't get you say there. how or in what condition exactly <laughs> yeah Southwest had the second, uh, the best second quarter of the group with a profit that is 12 times what Frontier's profits were. So how they're in the same category, I'll never understand it. Well, that's the thing. I don't think they really are, but they're considered more budget than some other airlines, but they're pretty comparable. Yeah. And Southwest is, they say in this article that that was nearly 50% decline compared to qu uh, well, a year previous. So it's pretty amazing. I think the, the testament to this here is people aren't flying and they're really tired of the experience and there's nothing to travel to. Right. So. Right. I Yeah. And with the fares going up, I mean, it's like there's all the hassles and then you're spending more money or you don't have any money for travel because you're spending so much on your fast food bill or whatever. Yeah, and if you ever get a chance, go to uh, Kansas City, Missouri's uh, 
TWA Museum. And you will get to see what it was like in the bygone age. Um, in some of these airlines, there's an airline that's coming back that's going to be doing a flight that's reminiscent of that era where people are dressed of like a particular uh, cultural context and they're going to be treated to having like China instead of whatever material it is that food's getting like served TV in. dinner type thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's pretty amazing what it was like, except that it was rather abusive back then with uh, flight crews. <laughs> well, see, but they were representative of the, the image that was desired to be portrayed. And so people had to fit a certain thing. A look, oh, yes. A very behavior. narrow image. Yeah. Um, which just ironically doesn't fly today. So Spirit is completely revamping how it sells tickets, but I don't know if that's actually what matters. Florida-based carrier recently announced plans to bundle tickets, previously a la carte items like free snacks and check bags into categories that would make the budget airline look more like its competitors. Uh, free snacks as part of your ticket? For crying out loud, it should be a requirement, you know, unless you allow us to bring food and drink on board, which you can't do once you're, you know, right when you're through security or whatever, you have to spend like you an can bring an empty water bottle, maybe, but you can't bring water or whatever, which isn't very handy. <laughs> yeah, once you're inside, but then to fill that water, there is no fountain kind of a thing, right? And if there is, yeah. who knows what somebody has done to it? Anyway, Spirit's new ticket bundles go on sale August 16th for flights starting August 27th. Uh, Southwest is scrapping its famous seating policy and changing something. The lack of pre-assigned seats is a hallmark of the Southwest Airlines experience, angering many loyalists online. The airline says its research shows pr uh, flyers prefer assigned seats. I would say that that's true because I want to be able to pick something. Um, the only problem there is sometimes when you pick something without being there, uh, location, 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 you might end up next to a, a toxic waste dump and want to relocate. I mean, I think being able to pick your seat out on the day might be preferable because of that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a win lose potentially. You know, you just be careful of the grass is always greener on the other side type of mentality. Well, I don't want to spend too long on this, um, but I wanted to draw attention to the fact that. It says Raymond James airline analysts estimate the assigned seating could generate up to $2 billion in near term revenue for Southwest. Just that change apparently. Well, um, if that's their most frequent complaint or something from customers, I, I could see that it's interesting though. Cause I, I think their seating model is preferable to others, but and you don't pay for seat assignments like you do on some of these others. That's another reason I don't think Southwest should really be grouped with these. Yeah. And I just don't think that Southwest should be grouped with these at all because the revenue is 12 times what the winningest uh, plane is on the, or the earningest plane is on the other, the other three. I mean, by 12 times, I don't think it really Anyway, we spent a lot of time on this, um, but I wanted to draw attention to it. In a nutshell, it's getting too expensive to fly. It, it's too much of a hassle to fly. You're too cramped. It's it's just a hassle. And in this day you and age... You got people coughing on you or screaming. Yeah, yeah, it's a Petri dish. Um, you get like con crud every time you fly. Well, convention crud, right? Anyway, let's move on making an executive order. We're changing our flight plan and moving over to Mobile. That's a channel here in ohmtown.com. Scientists found oceans of water on Mars, but can anybody reach it? NASA scientists who were encouraged by previous evidence of a giant lake on the surface of Mars must be in a catatonic state of glee right now. The new study published in the scientific journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences based on data from the InSight lander claimed that enormous reservoirs of water exist in igneous rock about 7 to 12 miles what deep can that be uh, yes Louise Prada? i think so i peeked at this article oh my god 
I announce it if I do. I rarely look ahead, but I wanted to see if this was one where it's actually water versus there might be water because I think we see a lot of articles like that and I think that's not the same level of news. Scofflaw. Rapscallion. I've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. We're not supposed to look. Anyway, 7 to 12 miles below the Mars surface, they estimate that there's enough groundwater to cover the entire planet around half a mile deep. You know what? Uh, Total Recall was a documentary. Because on Mars, they used a device that slammed down on frozen water and um, turned it into steam and that created an atmosphere and made it and generated oxygen and um, basically transformed Mars. Okay, that's prescient. So now we have Total Recall. And we're talking about like 80s, 90s movies. It's, I think this out in the 90s, right? Demolition Man is a 90s movie. Like 97 so. or something like that. Um, I don't remember. We should probably remember that for uh, continuity report. Okay, that's 1993. Oh, 93. Oh, actually, I wanted to say 94, but anyway. Total Recall, 1990. Oh, so 90s. Okay, so um, Total Recall, documentary, Demolition Man. Oh, and I was going to say, you know who was in both of those? But that's not true. Um, right, so I don't, there you I don't go. think the same. Yeah. So all they have to do is drill down and um, maybe the pressure will push water out onto the surface alone. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, this is really big news. So, so there's a, there's water, a lot of it, but right now, technologically speaking, there's no way to access it. Transporting big drills to another planet isn't the most economically feasible thing right now. You can do it like they did it with... Um, military vehicles from Vietnam piece by piece mail it home and then you have a brand oh, wow. new <laughs> <laughs> that might hey, before be I wow. get too far into this um, exclamation point NSN will pull from Umatron today's articles into the chat and you can follow the links from the chat uh, so Insight's lander mission ended in December 2022 when its power was depleted due to an over accumulation of Martian dust on its solar panels it's been enjoying its much deserved total recall style Martian vacation ever since. Okay, that's interesting. And you hadn't looked ahead at this. Nope. So, a bunch of water on Mars under the surface, just a stone's throw or stones dig away. Moving on, eventually. Come Maybe on. Maybe we'll have like those, um, uh, what are those? The vehicles that went in the water? We just had an article about that recently. Oh my gosh. Amphibious. Yes, thank you. Remember, I mean, we need those. Maybe we could put those up on Mars. I don't know if we should be focusing on something futuristic like this right now with the sentient AI from the future. I told Oof. you I needed more computational power. <laughs> Might have to reboot. <laughs> Better the amp it up. <laughs> Time to reboot. When in doubt, reboot. So uh, the next article is over on the Mobile channel as well. The subscription model has made it to Chuck E. Cheese. Even kids aren't immune to inflation, and Chuck E. Cheese is looking to capitalize. I think Chuck E. Cheese. Do you e. think Cheese. this? Good. Do you think this involves like three-year-olds having a subscription so that they get to, I don't know, get extra tokens or have extra rides or? I think the little kids have to go through a turnstile and donate a little bit of blood to give oh, no. back to Chuck E. Cheese. Um, the chain is offering two membership options that include discounts. Francisco Velasquez over at Quartz or QZ.com put this article together. Oh, so sad how the mouse has fallen. And this is a different mouse. Is it a rat? I don't know. Chuck E. Cheese is a mouse, but it's supposed to be a mouse, but it kind of looks like a rat. The, but the problem is the only one that in anybody's mind is that's a mouse is Mickey Mouse. There is no other mouse, right? True. Right. I mean, that is the mouse. 
So now there's going to be a monthly fee of $7.99 at 450 of its locations. Um, the restaurant chain has launched a new nationwide membership program that allows families to visit over 450 of its locations as often as they want for a monthly fee that starts at $7.99. So Chuck E. Cheese is going to be the daycare of the future. I mean, that actually sounds like a really good deal for parents, particularly if people go there often. If there's one near you. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. Not if it's like three states away or something. Uh, the membership includes access to play between 40 and 250 games per day with discounts of up to 50% on food, drink, and other perks. Plus, members are automatically enrolled in the chain's new Chuck E. Cheese Birthday Club. I might do this just so that I can That's go. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is it available for adults? I just can't imagine the food is that great. You know, I mean, I remember Chuck E. Cheese. Like I had gone there a couple of times when I was younger, but no, I, I don't think I, it didn't stand out as something memorable beyond I've been there. Uh, but I've only been in a Walmart twice in my life too. So um, I have kind of, maybe I have a bad experience with these membership things. Um, so should families opt in for bronze, they'll pay $7.99 a month or $50 for the two-month plan. Silver costs $11.99 a month or $70 for the two-month plan. And gold is $30 a month or $140 for the two-month plan. So they don't have a discount per year. They only have the standard rate and then it bumps up to $70 per month for two months. Either do you, you have to sign up for, you must have to sign up for a year because then this doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. That's weird. Right. Families have the option to choose between two memberships, the monthly fun pass and the two month fun pass. Both plans offer unlimited daily visits but the monthly fund pass is billed monthly and valid year round. Meanwhile, the two month pass requires a one time payment for short, short term use. But valid year round doesn't mean that you have to pay for an entire year. Yeah, that's not making a lot of sense here. Yeah, I think maybe a little bit of we'll have to look into it. But I don't follow links um, live on the show. So oh, I don't tend to. But anyway, there you go. Let's keep moving. Next article is over in the Wanted Channel. Indian Navy accidentally reveals nuke removal in yoga Instagram post. Never underestimate the ability of a nuclear nerd to pour through years of social media posts. That's okay. Um, so the articles over at gizmodo.com, Matthew Galt put the article together and the deck statement is what I just got done saying. It has a whole bunch of people on people posing aboard the INS, uh, Subhadara, um, in February of 2024. And it says world governments aren't exactly forthcoming about what, where they're stashing all their nukes. You want people to know you've got them, but not necessarily where they're located you would not want to say, oh, I don't know, reveal that you've removed nukes from a ship in an Instagram post about yoga. But that's what they say here. In an article titled Hot Launch Yoga, Cobra Pose Reveals Nuke Repose. The Federation of American Scientists detailed how it figured out the movement of India's nukes using social media. Uh, I mean, this, right. is, this is why there's always discussion about not posting location information and, and other things, but pretty yeah. unusual to have a yoga picture that reveals something about the nuclear program. So they say here, it dawned on Corda that these ships aren't necessarily or nearly as secretive as submarines. They have lots of missions beyond nuclear, including policing and coastal defense. That means that they're usually sailing into areas where people might be taking pictures of them with that hunch. They spent a few hours doing some keyboard searching on social media for the specific vessels that they were looking for to try and see if anyone had caught any pictures. And that's when the yoga picture popped up, pictures popped up. The first yoga post was on the deck of the INS Suvarana 
posted on October 2022 by PBS India. The second was from the deck of the INS Subhadra. Uh, wait, Subhadra. The other ones had Hadara. That's a very similar name, yeah. Um, in February 2024, the stabilizers were absent in both photos, meaning that India had moved its nukes. So apparently it has certain... Um, like equipment or something that you might see on there. Yeah. So the missiles on the Sukiyanas were an older design. They could only go a short range and needed to be fueled immediately before launch. For those reasons, experts always assumed India would eventually ditch these ship nukes for sub nukes. They just weren't sure when it would happen. Um, so they have a special equipment needed to deploy the nuclear weapons and going through satellite imagery, Corda noticed that the stabilizers required to fire the nukes seemed to be missing from the decks of the ships. So they knew that it had happened. Then they figured out when, but that historical time frame, they would have to go back and actually trace where the ship was during that time. And that may not have been possible. Right. They but they might moved. at least be able to pinpoint the time frame or something. Yeah. So, and then maybe other intelligence would lead to where they were at the given moment. That's some pretty interesting sleuthing. And the value of that is really uh, militarily valid, I suppose. But I, I suspect so. I mean, it almost seems like something they should give the person a an award or a promotion <laughs> for. I mean, it seems like a pretty big endeavor. I mean, it's not the normal way, presumably, to determine this. You would think, though, interested parties would have already known that through um, human in Other you know? channels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's pretty fascinating. If you want to learn more about this, then go over to this gizmodo.com article titled Indian Navy Accidentally Reveals Nuke Removal in Yoga Instagram Post by Matthew Galt. All right. The next article is over in the mobile channel as well. If you get meds by mail, they may be losing potency because of summer heat. Parts of the U.S. have experienced record-setting heat waves over the past few summers, uh, which may have caused pharmaceutical ingredients to degrade while en route which kind of sucks because if you order certain things, uh, pharmaceuticals and like vitamins and other things, they all lose uh, their potency and degrade because of heat. Heat is the ruination of all things. Like cool right. locks things in, stabilizes it, but heat, it basically uh, causes everything to expand and decompose faster. And it's just horrible. I mean, that is the thing. It's what I tell people. Technology is destroyed by heat. But if you get technology cold, it's not as destructive. It actually is kind of beneficial until you get into like negatives. Um, but you crank up something beyond 150 degrees um, operating temperature and CPUs go nuts. And, and other things can overheat because their internal temperature are increasing. Anyway... So Adam Kovac over at uh, gizmodo.com put this article together. Parts of the U.S. have experienced record-setting heat waves over the past few summers. I think some places were hitting like 125 degrees this summer. Um, well, absolutely. And I mean, people still need medications during the summer. So like yeah. it's tough if you can't order them by mail. And so as reported by the Times... Again, this is from the New York Times. Uh, some mail order pharmace pharmacists are assuring customers that their drugs are safe to use as long as there are no visible signs of degradation, which basically means open containers or, uh, and I'm talking about the pills themselves, haven't broken down um, or discoloration or it, it just doesn't function. Like you can get um, injectables that if they don't fire off, then obviously you've got a problem that was caused by either the heat caused distortion or uh, something happened mechanically. But the research has found that some medications can be damaged by heat without showing any outward signs. Mail order pharmacies said that they have specialized packaging that's weather resistant and precautions are taken when shipping meds that require specific storage temperatures. The Times noted the United States Pharmacopoeia which sets standards for the storage and shipment of pharmaceuticals recommends that oral medications 
be kept at an environment that's between 68 and 77 degrees in freedom units Fahrenheit um, versus uh, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. Which can't be done in the summer. I mean, yeah. it just cannot unless you're maybe in Antarctica. Yeah, they plop it on your porch or your... And it just bakes in the sun. Yep. Um, I had one package. They decided that it, it was just too much of a burden to walk up the 20 feet to the door. So they set it down in front of the mayoral mansion's garage. And and I actually was notified because, you know, the mayoral mansion has surveillance. And I'm like, what the hell? It's right there. They could have chucked it. And then it rained. And I'm like, you know what? So basically yeah, nature but says worse, you could have opened your package. garage door and it could have been a problem. Oh yeah. And, and that's actually happened too, where you open the garage door and there's a package there. Oh, hey, thanks. Anyway, a 2023 study published in the Journal of American Pharmacists Association found that shipped packages of medication spent more than 68% of their time outside of the recommended te temperature range. When a heat wave hit the United States in 2022, UPS drivers told the New York Times that temperatures in their vehicles had reached 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, and this is going to be an ongoing thing, um, much to well, many people's true. chagrin. We're talking about the delivery location, but it's all the time in loading docks and any or even in the vehicle. Sitting um, in the van. It's not temperature controlled. Yeah. Yeah. And actually the unionization of UPS drivers and FedEx drivers and um, Amazon delivery drivers, all of that is going to lead to uh, quality of service increases for those who are driving and, and delivering packages. Um, gone are going to be the days that there isn't any air conditioning. UPS suffered a lot because they basically have open doors. They they drive. They had to drive around with the doors open so that they can pull over and deliver a package and then jump in and drive away. And it was just a big pita uh, pain in the backside. So pit B. Anyway, <laughs> so um, go over if there, there's more uh, in this article by Gizmodo.com's Adam Kovac. All right, let's keep going, though. Executive decision. Moving on. The next article is over in Technology Today. Paramount laying off another 15% of its U.S. workforce. Hey, congratulations, investors. Paramount is laying off another 15% of its U.S. workforce, according to a report by Deadline. This follows a lean second quarter earnings report in which total revenue fell short from an expected 7.21 billion to 6.81 billion. This is revenue, but what is their profits? Okay, I'm but sure. also remember this is percentage. So if they're doing a percentage, it's now based on their existing numbers. So right. it might be even worse than, well, actually maybe then the percentage is reducing. But my point is if they've already reduced and they reduced, are we getting the full picture? No, we're not. No. Um. So yeah, it's... It, it's the same as compounding interest, but inverted. So yeah, Right, exactly. So the layoffs will impact around 3,000 people. The industry continues to evolve, they say, which is the most callous sociopathic statement that a human can make about fellow humans. But then when you talk about people investing and stuff like that, unless they also, they go, well, you know what? I had to let people go. Otherwise, the... 5,000 other people would have had to be let go eventually. They leave off the fact that their salary didn't decrease across the board so that we could keep more people. No, no, no. They just go, oh, well, you know, the industry is 6.81 billion dollars in total revenue. How much of that billions went to executive pay and, and, uh, profits where it should be distributed more i don't know equally more in an egalitarian fashion correct yeah yeah so uh, again it was written in as a staff menu uh, memo from the company ceo um 
And let's just jump on over to Engadget, which is the source Lawrence Bonk put the article together. The company let go of 3% of its employees back in February. So if 15% was 3,000, 3% would be what? At the time, 2,500 people, something like that. Um, so let's see, Paramount is laying off 15% of its US workforce, 3,000 people. Um, the representatives say, that's funny. The representatives say that the cuts will happen in three stages with layoff beginning today and 90% of all cuts being completed by the end of September. The layoffs will primarily impact employees involved in marketing and communications, which, you know, you don't want to get word out that um, your service You're doing exists. layoffs. <laughs> yeah. Though the company's legal and finance arms will also face cuts. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we don't want to be... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Financially you don't have, or legally sound. <laughs> yep. You know, when you're doing all of these layoffs, I'm sure that there yeah, are a couple of... you might need some of that. <laughs> there are a couple of people that are out there that are going to cheer that on. Um, so all of these layoffs are likely being used to clear the runway, so to speak, for the forthcoming merger with Skydance. The merger, again, mergers and acquisitions lead to <clears throat> destruction of people's lives. The, mergers, uh, the merger was announced back in June and will also head to the regulatory review process, or they're doing it even before the regulatory review process. Paramount also has been raising prices for its streaming service and, of course, deleting whole libraries of content for reasons that make a lot of sense to corporate executives, but not so much to regular people. So I think Lawrence Bonk and I probably were on the same page. <laughs> yeah. It just sucks, right? Because the merger, this could have been a sustainable business model if not for greed, right? Yeah. So, hold oh, absolutely. On. Like, if there are millions or go into the CEO or other C suite, I mean, maybe they could have, I don't know, retained the people and then just lost some of them through retent, um, attrition. So, gross profit for Paramount Global. For the 12 months ending June 30th, 2024, was $10 billion, a 2.51% increase year over year. Paramount Global annual gross profits from 2023 were $9.635 billion. A I mean, how many marketing people does that salaries? Is that by? probably quite a few? Yeah, quite a few. So, and, and this is profit. Okay, this is accounting for the libraries being bought and other things being developed and whatnot. This is after. Yeah, this is profit. This is cost of goods sold. Revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just rather disgusting. So where is all of that money going, right? Um, so let's see. I'm doing this live. We have time. So the CEO of Paramount Global, Bob Backish. Uh, made $31.3 million. It was a compensation dip slightly in 2023 um, from uh, uh, to 31.3 from 32 million the year prior. So we don't know what the filing or I don't know what the filing is for 2024 just yet. Um, but I'm sure it's a performance based somewhat element, but $31.3 million for a year of firing 4,000 people. Yeah, I was going to say the performance might be how many people did you fire this year? As in, you get more um, <laughs> firing more people. I'm kidding. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Let's. I, I can actually look that up. We have time. We got, we got a little bit of time. Well, I don't know. There's no direct number right off the top of my head, but yeah. Yeah, it's too it's too difficult for me to find it really quick. So earlier this year they let off they laid off eight hundred people and uh, and then today three thousand. So or planning three thousand. Can you imagine you wake up and you're like, oh, I might be one of the three thousand? No, yeah. and I think that's part of the problem too. They're announcing that there are waves of this, and you're thinking, oh, I'm in one of the affected departments, yeah, and I don't know if high. I'm losing my job in the next month. Morale's really high. Mm. 
Um, so the next article is over in the Hedge Ideas channel, which is all about business transformation. It's a show that I actually want to start, but I haven't uh, kicked it off yet. Instead, I'm going to be doing a, a bi-monthly show where we talk about brewing beer in a igloo. Bi-weekly or bi-monthly? See, so bi-monthly means every two months, or is it every two weeks? Bi-monthly... I- is every two months see i think if we look it up it has it can be bi-weekly is every two weeks or twice Mm -hmm. a week right bi-monthly it's twice a month or every two months yeah bi-monthly is only every two months like there isn't another definition for it Hmm. i don't know so, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it does have. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's not mm-hmm. very good terminology either of those. Sentient AI from the future. <laughs> I'm picking on you. I'm sorry. It's okay. I mean, bi weekly is one of those terms that don't make sense. Exactly. It means yeah. So, two completely different things. But I, I think most people think of bi monthly as every two months. So I'm, I might accelerate it, but the the process takes a couple of weeks typically. So, um, and we won't have a first show until probably two weeks after. So almost in a month. But I'm gonna keep on talking about this to kind of stir interest. But it'll focus on extract brewing. Um, anyway, like whole extract brewing. I'll explain it when we actually kick off the show. Anyway, or get closer to kicking off the show. Legendary California fish market sold $30 million in one year thanks to viral videos, then caught Amazon's attention, which led to Kings of Fish reality show, San Pedro Fish Market's Michael Ungaro and uh, Henry Ungaro Jr. on creating the Kings of Fish, and the S in fish is a dollar sign, reality show going viral and running a profitable family business what's fascinating is i have spent time in san pedro california that Um, might be why this article was submitted oh that's fascinating wow wow so sean p walchaff um oh oh put the article together for entrepreneur magazine but um it was also edited by jessica thomas I guess there's a video and it failed inside arc, but okay. Um, a The key takeaways here, a viral 2017 video led to a surge in sales that hasn't let up since. The market's social media presence has made it a brand known around the world. Um, and then after creating Kings of Fish as a web show to take control of the company narrative, the market caught Amazon's attention. And off you go. So it says, you know your restaurant has gone viral when it shuts down a California freeway off-ramp. That's what happened to San Pedro Fish Market after popular... I, I, I've been there. Um, after popular content creator Food Beast made a video about its super seafood tray. With its irresistible mountain of seasoned shrimp, onions, peppers, tomatoes, and potatoes, the family meal was destined to be popular, but no one at San Pedro fe- uh, Fish Market knew just how famous it would become until the Food Beast feature hit social media. Dun, dun, dun. That's really neat. So it brought in 30,000 customers in 10 days from all over the country and outside the country. People were calling from London, South America, Kansas, and Florida. Wow. So now Kings of Fish series on Prime Video... It now serves 2.5 million people every year. Oh, wow. So, and now the business expects to reach new heights of fame with the debut of its Kings of Fish series on uh, Amazon Prime Video starting on August 13th, which is today. Ta-da. Oh, yeah, it is. Go check it out. Might have to look at it just so that I can go, oh, right. yeah. You know, if you walk right down there. Is the... <laughs> um. So all of this, uh, all of us have a story of traveling somewhere far away and seeing a fish market shirt. They've, uh, Ungaro says, I've traveled to Europe after college. Same thing. I went down to Mexico to visit a couple of our employees, fish market shirts. It's just insane. Pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. I like that small world. Um, 
it was like being in Jamaica and running into somebody that was right down the street. <laughs> yeah. Like not in Jamaica, like back here in the States, they, they lived right down the street. <laughs> Moving on, next article is over in non sequitur news. A couple rents its 40 foot tall tower, fire tower, on Airbnb for over $260 a night. There are over 1,600 people on the wait list for the property's 65 spots. <laughs> wow, why are there 65 spots though? Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's wait, once. I, there's 52. And how large are fire towers? Oh, is that per year? No, that it has to be per sense. year, right? It must be per year and you must have to book for a few nights at a time or something. Yeah. So a couple built a 40 foot tall Airbnb inspired by the U S forest service fire lookout towers, which I, how did this, that get cleared by anything? I mean, I don't know. I figured they bought a fire tower like on auction or something like renovated or something. Yeah, exactly. So the property accepts 65 reservations a season and there are 1600 plus names on the wait list. They could probably jack that up quite a bit, you know, above 260 bucks to whittle that down. But. Or they could build a second one. I mean. Yeah, it would be smart to build more, right? So drive along a one lane gravel road deep in Oregon's Umpqua, I guess, um, National Forest. And you'll find Summit Prairie, a secluded 40 foot fire lookout tower with three beds, a pea pot and limited cell service. And I never want to say peapot again. I, I never want to hear peapot again. Peapot. Well, that's a reason the rate should not go up. There you I go. Above 200 already and you get a peapot. What's worse are the downstairs residences because when you use the peapot. Anyway, um, over 1,600 people are on the wait list to spend a night there. This is an article over at businessinsider.com. Amanda Adler put the article together. Hmm. Yeah, it's basically like your basic kind of square house, but high up. Yeah, but elevated, right? Yeah, 40 feet up. I don't know. I kind of dig it, but I don't want to have to climb 40 feet worth of stairs to use a pea pot. Right, if it had modern plumbing, maybe. <laughs> or worse, the pea pot is on the ground floor. Oh, goodness. Can you imagine if you woke up in the middle of the night? <laughs> yeah. Honey, I'm going to go downstairs and use the pea pot, but there's a bear. <laughs> right. That might eliminate the need for the pea pot. Honey, I use the pea pot without the pea pot. <laughs> Can we say pea pot any more times? I'm going to. Yeah. Dabney Tompkins and Alan Colley built the tower in 2009 as a reprieve from city life in Portland. Some people want to have a ski condo. Some people want a beach cottage for a second home. But we said, let's do a fire lookout, Tompkins told Business Insider. Years later, the couple started renting Summit Prairie on Airbnb, staying nearly er, nearby on the 160-acre property so that they could serve as high-touch hosts. Now they have a list of regulars and more demand than the property can accommodate. Well, that's interesting. Interesting. Yep. Right on. I mean, there's a lot of pictures over here as usual for business insider. I won't go through them all. Um, that's, you know, the provenance of business insider, but it's your standard, you know, 40 foot tower with a big square house on it. Looks right. Like you see those every day. Yep. You know, as one does, you know, we've got that right here out uh, just outside of the uh, mayoral mansion, just when we're bored here in the mayoral mansion and it's air conditioning and indoor plumbing and refrigerator and all that accoutrement of uh, non-savage life. We want to go out into the back 160 acres of wilderness, similar to the Umqua National Forest, much further, further out than 10 miles from Tiller, Oregon. I think Mayor Watt may have hit his head. <laughs> I fell down these stairs and didn't dreaming. stop. <laughs> I fell down 40 feet worth of stairs uh, and didn't stop until I hit the pea pot. Moving on. Next article is over in uh, Four Wheel Tech. Toyota recalls over 33,000 vehicles for having the wrong sticker. <laughs> if you're currently <laughs> the owner of a 2023 or 2024 Toyota, apparently of any 
2023 or 2024 Toyota, you may want to listen up. The automaker is recalling thousands of every model it sells because the vehicles may have been fit fitted with the wrong load sticker. Oof. I mean, Toyota sells a lot of cars. This is a ton of cars to be recalled over something that sounds like a pretty minimal issue. I think it's ironic that it's a load of vehicles and it's the load <laughs> sticker that's bad. Lawrence Hodge over at Jalotnik.com put the article together. Yeah. So what does it say? It's from the NHTSA. On the effective vehicles, the weight listed on the load carrying capacity modification label may be higher or lower than the actual total weight of accessories installed. In the worst case, a driver may unknowingly overload a vehicle, which may increase the risk of crash. You know, I okay, don't think... but would you have to put like a, um, an EV Ford 150 on top of it to matter? Or is it like you put an extra watermelon in your trunk? Yeah, and that's kind of the thing. I don't think anybody looks at the owner's manual anymore. They look online and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to be a dumbass and try and haul an M1 Abrams with a Prius. Well, I'm sure there's somebody out there, but yes. <laughs> there's always somebody for crying out loud. Yeah, you're right. Somebody thought that a Cybertruck was an amphibious vehicle with a $9,000 gross weight. Yeah, okay. Anyway. So the agency says nearly every single Toyota model from 2023 and 2024 is affected. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Yeah. And HTSA says dealers were notified of the problem before August 9th. However, owners won't start being notified in, by mail until September 16th to 20th. This is just one of the few recalls the automaker has issued so far in 2024. In January, a few thousand ninth generation Corollas were, were recalled over an airbag issue. Um, Mazda and Ford also have Takata airbags, apparently. Correct. And they're saying, don't drive those cars, but it's not all models. Yeah. So, um, uh, that's over in, if you do a search for Takata. It's in hometown. Yeah. It's in hometown. I was going to say, just do a search in hometown. We only, we select 10 articles and I chose this over that. So anyway, um, in January, a few thousand ninth generation Corollas were recalled over an airbag issue. A month later, 381,000 last gen Tacomas were recalled over welding defects on the rear axles that could cause them to break. Um, and that's B-R-E-A-K, not B-R-A-K-E. Um, oh, wow. Break and break is the same. It's just. Yeah, that, and that's an important clarification when you're talking about anything about cars. Sorry, I had to change that music because that was not music. And then uh, this was in addition to the 280,000 Sequoias, Tundras, and Lexus LXs that were recalled over transmission issues. So, yeah, Toyota. Uh, I've always respected Toyota for the, its quality and its resale value and whatnot. But, man, this last year... Kind of. I don't know. They're having a tough year, but a lot of the manufacturers are. Like, Stop I'm not sure Toyota's profits. is going worse than the others. Stop seeking over uh, 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 irrational profits. Get back to quality baseline, quality control, monitoring. Make your customers happy and they'll pay the price. Anyway, maybe I'm not the CEO of a Fortune 50 company, but I'm also not the one that has to do a million cars worth of recalls. So I guess I'm doing something right. Touche. Moving on. The last article for today is over. Look at that. I almost nailed the timing on average. If I shut up and just do the... <laughs> You don't comment on it. Last article. Keep moving. So this last article is in Smack Talk, which is a kind of a funny riff, haha, off of it being a Mac thing. See, Mac, Apple. Anyway, Smack Talk is all about Apple. A massive data leak, leak may include the personal data of every person in the US, UK, and Canada. A massive data leak, and this is coming from every person. nine to five Mac, by the way. Um, and that's why it's aggregated in the Smack Talk. I don't know if it has anything to do with Apple yet. So 
A massive data leak of some 2.7 billion records may include sensitive personal data for every person in the US, UK, and Canada. For the US, the data includes social security numbers. Huh? That's almost how is that possible? I mean, we see these ridiculous breaches like all all of some mega companies uh, customers, but all people. <laughs> the data is said in to have multiple come from countries. It, 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 see, but because it's this, it's a data broker it collects and sells personal data for use in background checks for, by private investigators. That shit should be. Um, sorry, that stuff should be so so well protected that no, you can't do that. And no private company should be the broker of everybody's personally identifiable information. But then people freak out about the government having it, right? So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But all it takes is one numb nuts to be helming the cybersecurity and this happens you know if you're just a small organization and you get compromised it happens you don't have the budget but if you have three billion records worth of personally identifiable information you should be like the fort knox of data you know it should take an oceans 11 12 and 13 level schema to break into this thing and you still get caught with your pants down on the way out but no, Ben Lovejoy over at 9to5Mac.com put the article together. Um, and it's coming originally from Bleeping Computer, which reports that a hacker attempted to sell the data, then said to be 2.9 billion rather than 2.7 billion records for $3.5 million, stating that it contained records of every individual in each of the three countries. Well, if it's background check information, right? And we've seen that with some other breaches. I mean, that's going to be things like Everything. whatever mother's maiden name, social security number, like every piece of thing that can identify somebody. And that's going to be a problem. And then also if somebody has, you know, criminal history or something, all that's going to be in there too. And look, it's the USDOD. So it's SF-86 level records. So, which is... SF-86 is the background check form, and it goes back to basically your existence um, and is the grounds for you getting clearance or not. Um, So it says, since then, there have been several uh, partial leaks, which has said to be full copy of the database has now been made available for download. The data, the leaked data consists of two text files totaling 277 gigabytes and containing nearly 2.7 billion plain text records rather than the original 2.9. So, oh, oh pardon me. Um, oh, wow. Hopefully says, for anybody listening, they're in that small delta. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, you're not in the 200 million that wasn't included in this. But that's a rounding error for crying out loud in terms of the number of people. It's probably every human Um but I don't know what the time frame is. I wish somebody would have parsed it and said it's from this data point to this data point, you know? Well, least- true. But I also think, like you said, I mean, this could be somebody's entire existence, right? Like it's yeah. their whole adult existence, like all their residences, things like that. Yeah. And it ha- having been tagged by that um, in other ways uh, in history, I, it's quite interesting to receive a letter saying that your data is part of a uh, a government data exposure. And I've had it locally and I've had it um, nationally. Um, and it's not because I'm sitting there, you know, stripping off my clothes and running naked through the quad. Hey, pay attention to me, you know, dox me, blah, blah, blah. No, it's because some goober left something open on a file somewhere and because there are people are nonstop and you can automate telemetry gathering and then come back, you do recon and then you come back and you hack actively, but somebody has to be monitoring actively to catch them. No, it doesn't always happen. It's too expensive. Yeah. I mean, most of the people that are subject to these breaches are just going about their existence and their data is in somebody's database. But something known as national public data, if it has, anything other than 
what I posted to Facebook, that crap had better be so locked down. And this is why I think we dem we should all tax. be as citizens demanding right to be forgotten. And that whenever our information is transferred from one company to another company, we have the right, we not the right, it is a command that we are notified and we have to affirm yay or nay. Because this happens with FERPA. It happens with HIPAA. We have to allow the transfer of our information. Um, in fact, that just reminded me of something that I need, I want to go do. But anyway, um, yeah. And this is just exemplary of the fact that we don't have any data monitoring rights, not until after the fit has hit the shan. And then it's data, it's um, identity protection services, which are a dime a dozen really. It may not catch the low hanging fruit of somebody stealing a credit card and using it. And then the victim has to be the one that chases it all down. Again, I know from experience, <laughs> you know, I almost went after somebody in New York because they were actively using a credit card. And I called up the credit card company and I said, Hey, I'm going to drive up to New York and catch this person. I know exactly where they're going next. And sure enough, ding on the, credit uh, card listing is the location and the bank is like no please please just here's your money back just no just, just no step away and i'm like well this kind of stuff shouldn't be like a just be chill about it um you know stop it actively anyway um so since then there have been partial leaks of the data so expect some notices from various organizations saying your data to was everybody. part of yeah everybody is going to get a little piece of paper usps is going to be very busy oh and corresponding services in other countries it's a conspiracy the usps did this so that they could stimulate no 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 we're not going to be spreader of baseless conspiracy theories in hometown Wait, hometown could get some good marketing by ending up on Snopes. Isn't that how it works? No, no. Right? Fake it till you become a federal crime. No, no I'm doing it. No, no. I'm doing it wrong. I'm sorry, folks. Bad mayor, bad. Where's the water bottle? <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that's it for non sequitur news for. August 13th, 2024, season three, episode 226. If I didn't say it at the beginning, I am Marwat, and that is the visual. Well, that's the visualizer for the sentient AI. The other voice you hear is the sentient AI, a co host. There's only one sentient AI. Um, good night, hometown citizens. Thanks for joining us for non sequitur news. And you're not on the main page. Oh, hey, you know what? Uh, we're going to reboot and end up back at the front page. Ta-da! There you go. Yay! Ah! All right. Well, see you in a little bit, everybody. Uh, we're calling it a night, but uh, tomorrow we'll be doing... Uh, we have two more catch-up shows that Marwat still hasn't done, and so I may do them earlier, and, and then uh, we'll do the 8 o'clock show, and even that might be early. Today it was supposed to be early, but All right, we're outie. See you soon. I just clicked the wrong thing. And now all of my data is exposed by the national. No, I don't know. See ya. <laughs>